Welcome to the Radiation Detection Program. This is Mike Schoenborn. On the left, you're looking at an iPhone with a radiation detection app that you can download from iTunes. On the right is an Android phone with a radiation detection program that I developed that you'll be able to download as well. Calibrated equipment accurately measures the level of radiation, giving a result in sievert or some other unit, providing a dosage the human body is being exposed to or absorbing. The uncalibrated detectors in this video simply indicate the presence of radiation. The most popular type of radiation detector uses the Geiger tube. The Geiger tubes are filled with a gas, typically neon. The Geiger tube is also called an ionization chamber. A high voltage is applied across the tube. When a high energy particle, like radiation, passes through the gas, the tube will temporarily conduct, generating a pulse. This kit uses a 555 timer and a step-up transformer configured in a flyback mode to take 9 volts and generate 600 volts across the tube. This tube seems to be readily available, very popular on the web. You can buy in bulk of 100 if you want, and it's a good detector of alpha and beta particles. There are many types of Geiger tubes available on the market. They vary in sensitivity and their ability to detect particles, either alpha, beta, or gamma. And of course, you could always build your own Geiger tube. Here I have the assembled board connected to a 9-volt battery. I'll turn it on and you'll begin to hear the Geiger clicks. This is an indication of background radiation. I don't have any radioactive sources nearby. To send the counts to the Android phone, I modified the Geiger counter to send its output to an Arduino board. I wrote a program in the Arduino processor to collect the counts. I take the counts and then transmit them via this Bluetooth module connected to the Arduino board over to the Android phone. This is a schematic for the Geiger counter. I had two choices for outputs, Q2 to the speaker or Q3 to the LED. I decided to use a Toshiba optocoupler on Q3, basically replacing the onboard LED with the optocoupler, just connecting wires to the cathode and anode and removing the LED off the Geiger counter board. I take the output of the optocoupler and run that to pin 2 on the Arduino card where I have that programmed as an input. I use a 10k pull-up to 9 volts. With the 9 volts is off the Arduino card and so it's totally isolated from the uh, battery that's used to power the Geiger counter. The signal is pretty dirty, uh, the pulse is very dirty coming off of the Geiger counter. So I use a 330 microfarad capacitor to clean up the pulse. Uh, there's still some noise, but it's suppressed enough so that I can detect the pulse. It's a 50 millisecond pulse uh, for each particle detected, so you're going to get a maximum of 20 counts per second with this board. And here you can see the Geier counter in its 9 volt battery with the speaker generating clicks as the particles of background radiation strike the tube. The the Android phone program is showing that I have in my area about 36 counts per minute and it's right now accumulating another minute's worth of counts. The last experiment that I want to run here is to expose the Geiger tube to a higher level of radiation so we can increase the counts. I went to the hardware store, bought a smoke detector. As some of you know, a smoke detector has a small amount of radioactive material in it that they use in their ionization chamber for detecting smoke. That material is called a Miracum 241 and I'm going to pull this smoke detector apart so that we can expose the Americum directly to the Geiger tube. Well, I'll just pull the top of the smoke detector off to get at the ionization chamber, which is this plastic screen mesh and metal ionization plate. Pull the plastic and the plate off, and we'll see the Americum pallet uh, down in this mounting, which we can expose that directly to the Geiger tube, and we'll get a higher level of alpha and beta particles. Okay, so we just take the smoke detector and make sure that the Americum is placed right over top of the Geiger tube. You can hear that the counts are going up. And the Android phone is showing that we're getting about 280 counts per minute. You can see the number of counts per second are, are jumping around um, almost 10, 12 counts per second. Next, I want to review with you the iPhone radiation detector. This is available on iTunes. There's a free version and a $5 version, which provides you with the circuit diagram of the detector box. 
This project was started by a group of volunteer engineers and, and scientists in Japan in response to the Fukushima disaster. They wanted to make radiation detectors more affordable and more available to the general population. The radiation detection box for this iPhone was not available during the making of this video. Its planned release is sometime second half of 2011. Interesting thing about the box is it will not use a Geiger-Muller tube for radiation detection. Instead, it will use cheap photodiodes. That should help them to hit their target cost for this of $50. The app is available on iTunes today. I've downloaded it here, and I'm going to demonstrate it. This is the free version of the app. The app takes its input from the headphones. Uh, since I don't have a headphone uh, connected to the iPhone, it's basically taking the sound waves coming in from the microphone and displaying those as counts per minute. I played with this software for a while. It works really well. I plan to modify my Arduino code to send the Geiger pulses into the headphone. If anyone's interested in the results of how well that works, just let me know. I'd be glad to share it with you. There's also a $5 version of this app, which includes the schematic for the detection box. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and my name is Mike Schoenborn. You can contact me on YouTube or Element 14 website.